With the new Egghead Island arc well underway, after the long tenure of the Wano Country arc, fans are finally getting some action from characters within the story that were yet to showcase any of their capabilities. While there is certainly still so much more for fans to see from the remaining mysterious characters, the displays of Conqueror's hockey have gone to an all-time high, leaving many debating on power levels yet again. Considering the story's position entering what Eiichiro Oda calls the final saga, the most popular and the main character of the series, Monkey D. Luffy, is among those showcasing their kingly ambitions. But this does not come without others, who many assume to be the strongest in the world of One Piece. Shanks vs. Whitebeard Clash Dating back to the pre-time skip period of One Piece, one of the most impressive and shocking displays of Conqueror's hockey was the clash between Shanks and Whitebeard. While it wasn't clear at the time that the clash was based on the pair's Conqueror's hockey, Wano has recently helped clarify this by showcasing two sequences that involve the same sky-splitting scenario, but now clearly display the hockey-infused attacks. Back then, it was a big deal for fans, as it was not only the first time fans finally saw Shanks and Whitebeard make a move, but it was arguably the best showcase of strength. Now, it is an even bigger deal in favor of Shanks, and the recent displays of strength in the current stage of the story suggest he may be stronger than his former captain, Goldie Roger. Roger vs. Whitebeard Clash Speaking of Goldie Roger, Wano Country was the first time fans got to see the former Pirate King in action taking out Kazuki Odin with a divine departure, and then fiercely clashing with a prime white beard both using Conqueror's hockey infusion. It all left many in shock, given the lack of lore and information regarding hockey at the time, since the Straw Hats knew nothing about it, especially Conquerors. The aforementioned Shanks and white beard clash was outdone by this. Not only was it because Roger was one of the most anticipated characters for fans to finally see in battle, but Wano was a period at which hockey was fully fleshed out and expanded upon. This clash between the two strongest pirates in the previous era set a precedent for characters that were supposedly within the series' top tier in terms of strength and appears to be a trendsetter for the strongest characters' encounters. Luffy vs. Kaido Clash Considering Monkey D. Luffy's progression dating back to the very first arc, the sky-splitting clash with Kaido is the best among them all. Going from a weaker yet resilient and confident pirate to one who has taken down one of the strongest characters in the series, this clash was the first indication of Luffy stepping into in-game territory. While the bout with Kaido resulted in multiple losses, each time he rose again, Kaido was in for the battle of his life. This sky split also enabled the Mink allies to undergo their Sulung transformation, speeding up the success rate of the raid, which was very tense. While the ability to finally defeat Kaido came from the Gear 5 transformation, the final Budrum gun attack included Conqueror's hockey infusion, which stemmed from Luffy's discovery earlier on in their bout, and the said sky splitting clash. Shanks Frightens Green Bull Arguably the most impressive display of Conqueror's hockey was included in the latter chapters of Wano Country. While Green Bull was aggressive in his attempt at spoiling the success parade at Wano, Shanks showed up and seemingly let off sparks of Conqueror's hockey at an incredibly far distance, which left Green Bull stopped in his tracks considering Green Bull's position as an admiral comparable to the likes of Akainu, Fujitora, and Kizaru, who is now with the Blackbeard Pirates. This suggests Shanks is one who must not be tampered with, with Chapter 1079 putting an end to Eustace Kid via Shanks. Divine Departure Just as Roger did to Odin, it only heightened Shanks' position in the discussion of power levels and makes his threat to Green Bull much more significant. Sequences as such have left fans wondering what would ensue once Shanks is fully able to let loose in a full-fledged encounter, which of course would involve Conqueror's hockey. Garb's Galaxy Fist Possibly the greatest and most impressive attack in the entirety of One Piece is Monkey D. Garb's Galaxy Fist, Conqueror's hockey attack on Hachinosu. In all the displays of infused attacks previously, not one character has managed to do what Garp has done from such a high distance and a large scale of an attack. It very much resembles his grandson's Budrung gun, but is arguably on the same scale, or even more impressive, as it is purely through hockey. Given Garp's rivalry with Goldie Roger years before, it should be no surprise that Garp's combat capabilities are up to this extent, but it has left fans in a debate once again as to how strong he must have been in his prime.
And in other news, One Piece, the Mara Mara no Mi explained, most Logia type devil fruits in Hiro Oda's One Piece confer powers that are a cut above the other two categories in their basis form. On ingesting these fruits, the user receives a broad range of abilities covering long range attacks, environmental manipulation, and most importantly, the power of intangibility. At the start of the series, this proved to be a major problem for Luffy and the Straw Hats, where they had to devise specific countermeasures against the fruit in each case. It was only the introduction of hockey that even the playing field between Logia users and the general populace and still leaves a considerable gap in power that would remain difficult to address. Needless to say, several of the most powerful combatants in One Piece are Logia users, as seen in the case of Blackbeard, Fleet Admiral Akainu, Admiral Kazaru, Smoker, Crocodile, Inel, and many others. One of the most iconic and sought-after fruits in this class, however, is the Mara Mara no Mi which was most recently eaten by Sabo, chief of staff of the Revolutionary Army and Luffy's sworn brother. Prior to the events of the Dressrosa arc, where Sabo came to possess the fruit, it was made famous by the son of the Pirate King, Porgasti Ace, who was also Luffy's sworn brother and the second division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates until his demise during the Summit War of Marine Ford. Ace's exploits with the fruit earned him the epithet of Fire Fist, which was also his signature attack when using the power of the Mara Mara no Mi renowned for his explosive power, flashy fighting style, and innovative use of the fruit's fiery capabilities. Ace's time with the fruit made it an emblematic part of One Piece, and one of the most coveted devil fruits in the story, a roaring inferno. Named for the Japanese onomatopoeia that refers to something bursting into flames, the Mara Mara no Mi was eaten by Ace after his departure from Dawn Island, where he was shipwrecked on an island with the alias of Mass Dew. After unsuccessfully trying to escape, Ace was prepared to eat a fruit to abate his starvation, which unbeknownst to him was the Mara Mara no Mi. He decided to split the fruit but ate it first and managed to gain its power. The pair would then escape and go on to form the Spade Pirates, a round orange fruit with whirling flame-like patterns across its surface. The Mara Mara no Mi bears a fitting resemblance to the devil fruit powers it grants, capped by a swirled stem. Like most other Logia types, the fruit's greatest benefit is the intangibility it grants, alongside allowing its users to create, manipulate, or turn their bodies into fire. This opens up the door for extremely powerful fire-based attacks, offering great or resistance to heat, or the option of augmenting physical attacks with fire, while also allowing a user to ignite their own bodies and burn opponents if they get too close. When pitted against other Logia types, the fruit seems to hold its own quite well and achieve a stalemate, as seen in Ace's fights against Smoker and Aokiji. Unfortunately, the one fruit it seems to be inferior to is Akainu's Magu Magu no Mi as it falls below it in the elemental hierarchy, where magma is considered to be even hotter than than fire. Even the intangibility provided by the fruit is rendered null and void as Ace was unable to defend against any of Akainu's attacks, which led to his defeat and eventual death at the hands of the future fleet admiral, the most sought after Logia. The aftermath of Ace's death saw his name and fame grow ever greater, and with it, the profile of his devil fruit. When Luffy and the Straw Hats landed in Dressrosa's Corita Coliseum, they were astounded to find that the Mara Mara no Mi was now in the hands of Don Quixote da Flamingo, who had offered it as a prize for the winner of a tournament being held at the venue. Enraged by this knowledge, Luffy vowed to enter the tournament and win it, even though he would not have been able to eat the fruit and take its power for himself. Luckily for him, another one of his sworn brothers, Sabo, who was presumed dead, had also made his way to Dress Rosa along with his comrades in the Revolutionary Army. Sabo eventually went on to win the tournament after impersonating Luffy in the final clash, becoming the Mara Mara no Mi's next user, and inheriting Ace's will. In the time since the Summit War, the Mara Mara no Mi had come to be known as the devil fruit wielded by the son of the former Pirate King, with its destructive capabilities having been put on full show for the world to see at Marine Ford. Its fame as the Fire Fist's devil fruit grew even greater, to a point where every contender at the Corita Coliseum was willing to risk life and limb in order to gain its powers. Doflamingo intended to use it as a means to erode the foundation of Luffy's alliance with Trafalgar Law, where he knew that the Straw Hat captain would charge in with no second thought in order to prevent Ace's devil fruit from falling into the wrong 
hands. To Luffy's good fortune, Sabo was able to win the fruit in his stead, preventing his worst nightmare from coming true. Two generations of Fire Fists Ace generally named most of his Mara Mara no me enhanced attacks after Japanese phrases that led back to certain specific mythologies. Perhaps the most iconic of them all would be Hikin, which literally translates to Fire Fist, and features him turning his fist into flames and launching a powerful column of fire towards his opponent. It is said that Ace had sunk countless battleships and defeated hordes of extremely strong pirates with his flame powers, and this attack in particular. On consuming the fruit after winning the Korea the Coliseum tournament, Sabo unleashed his own version of Hikin to signify that he was prepared to take on the role Ace had once played in Luffy's life. Ace's offensive arsenal also included a number of short and long-range attacks, where he would net-like create constructs from fire with Enjomo, or amass flames, and shoot a gigantic pillar of fire at his opponent with Enkai and Hibashira. Other attacks include Hotarubi, where he shoots countless small fireballs that resemble fireflies, Shinka, Shiranui, where he hurls lances of fire, or Jujika, which takes form as a cross-shaped column of fire formed by the intersection of his index fingers. Many of them were on display between the fight between Ace and Blackbeard, which also showed off his most devastating attack, illuminating the full extent of the Mara Mara no Mi's astonishing power, named Dianchi Antii. This attack sees Ace gathering flames and concentrating them at a point in his palm which then expands into a gigantic fireball reminiscent of the sun. He then hurls the attack at his enemy to wipe them out completely. Aside from these attacks, Sabo has also demonstrated his own take on the Mara Mara no Mi's abilities, merging them with his Ryusoken, Dragon Claw Fist, Fighting Style and Moro Ryusoken, Kane Ryo, which also makes use of armament hockey. In this manner, the late Fire Fist Ace and his successor, now dubbed the Flame Emperor Sabo, have shown the potent power of the Mara Mara no Mi, leaving no doubt as to why it is desired by so many. That's a wrap for this video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We'll be back with more amazing videos very soon.